Hi there everyone, welcome to our lesson on air masses. Now tonight I want to talk about these big huge bodies of air that bring different types of weather to our areas, to our towns, to our cities and states and so forth. If you've seen pictures or even just looked outside and experienced the weather itself, you would have seen certain types of weather events such as tornadoes, thunderstorms, blizzards. Now the reason why we get these different types of weather events is because our atmosphere changes and the reason why it changes is because we have these big huge bodies of air moving in and colliding with one another. Now these air masses, these bodies that I'm talking about, typically have different characteristics to them and that's what we're going to discuss tonight. First off, the first thing that you need to know is what an air mass is. And an air mass is what it sounds. It's a big mass of air. It's a big body of air. And throughout that body of air, it has uniform characteristics or the same characteristics throughout the entire mass. So those characteristics usually refer to two things, temperature and moisture level or humidity. Now, there are different words to describe the temperature and the moisture levels in these air masses, and that's what we're going to go over in this chart here. So these are the terms that meteorologists, the professionals that study the weather and deliver the weather to us, use. Now, there's two words that we use to describe temperature, and that's what we're going to start with here. We can either describe the air as tropical air or polar air. Now, if you've heard of these words before, which you've probably have, you have an idea of what they're going to mean. So if you ever wanted to go to like a tropical place, there's usually a type of temperature you're going for. And that temperature is usually a warm temperature because you want to go to the beach, hang out, go into the ocean, swimming, do whatever it is that you want to do in the tropical area. Now, tropics are typically formed in or found in the south. So these tropical warm areas are going to be formed in the southern regions of North America. So if you've ever gone to Florida, you'll notice that Florida is much warmer than New York in the wintertime. So that's one way to remember what tropical is and that they form in the south. Or if you think about the deserts in Texas and Arizona and New Mexico, that is in the south, whereas we don't have those up here in the north in New York and so forth. So that's what scientists use to describe warm air masses. Polar is going to be the opposite. Polar is going to mean cold. And if you think about Polar bears, which is what I thought about when I was first learning this. I remember that polar bears lived in areas that had ice sheets and icebergs and just miles and miles of snow and ice. Now, that helped me remember that it was a cold environment, so therefore, polar air is going to be cold air. And as we know, polar bears and th those types of environments, they are all, are all formed up north of us. It gets colder as you get closer to the North Pole. So... It was easy for me, and it should be easy for you, to remember that polar air is cold and it forms in the north. That takes care of temperature and how temperature is described in an air mass. Moisture, they do have two familiar words that you've heard of before as well, or variations of them. So moisture can be described as one of two things. It can be described as continental, or it can be described as maritime. Now, if you think about the word continental, the easy thing to think about is what a continent means or what continental means. So continents are large masses of land. So usually continental air masses form over land. And if you know or realize anything about the land, land is usually typically dry. So as a result, the air is going to have low humidity in them and it's going to be dry air. It's not going to be as humid. Maritime, you've probably heard the word marina or marine. All have to do with the ocean. The marinas where boats dock, so think about over the water or on the water. Submarines are, are ships that actually go under the ocean. That's what submarine means, under the ocean. So maritime air masses typically form over the water. And as we learned in our last vodcast about the water cycle, the oceans are going to evaporate and contribute a lot of water vapor into the air. And that's going to make the air humid. So these are the major characteristics that we use to discuss and describe air masses. So let's take a look at where they form, their source regions, and also what they are called and how we write them out. All right, so here we have a picture of North America. So what we have here is we have these shapes, these big blue bubbles in the north, and we have these big red bubbles in the south. And these represent the source regions, the, the areas where these air masses form, and then they show us the direction in which these air masses move. Now, there are five different types of air masses, but we're really going to concentrate on four types. We're going to concentrate on maritime polar, which is what MP stands for, continental polar, maritime tropical, 
and Continental Tropical. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to know here. First of all, when you write one of these abbreviations, which you may when we take our test, you need to make sure you put the humidity first, okay, which is the lowercase letters. Maritime and Continental refer to whether it's humid for maritime or dry for continental. And then on the second part of that abbreviation in capital, you need to put the temperature, either polar for cold or tropical for, for warm. Now we have a fifth air mass here that develops way high up in North America here, um, up towards the poles, and this is called continental Arctic air. This is a little bit different from continental polar air, which we'll get to in a moment, but we'll discuss that in a little bit. So what you want to do is this. You want to take a look at the region that your, your source region is forming in. And if we take a look, we can see that this, for, this source region is up in the north. So as we know, north is cold. So we know that our temperature is going to be cold and it forms over the water. So since it's the, over the water, it is humid. So we're going to take those two characteristics, cold and humid, and figure out which abbreviation has the both of them. Well, for cold, it's going to be polar. So we want P in our abbreviation, and over the water, it's maritime because it's humid. So we want M in the abbreviation. So as I said, you're always going to write your humidity first and then your temperature second. So this air mass is going to be a maritime polar air mass. And if we skip all the way across the map here, you'll notice that we have another body of air that forms in the north, which makes it cold, and then also over the water, which makes it humid. So that's going to be a second maritime polar air mass. Now inland here we have two types of air masses. We have what's called continental arctic and if we take a look down here we have an air mass that's blue formed in the north so it's cold but it's over land. Yeah I see that there is some water over here but the majority of it's going to form over land. It's not out in the ocean like the other two are. So its moisture level is going to be significantly lower than the maritime polar air masses. So because this is more over land and it's cold, we have polar for cold and dry for continental. This is going to be our continental polar air mass. Continental polar air is cold, dry air. However, the further up north you get, the, the colder it becomes. Since the continental Arctic air mass forms further north, this is extremely cold air. So this is even cooler air than the continental polar and that's the difference between the two they're both cold but continental arctic is very cold so think about the word arctic as in like the north pole as cold as it's going to get in the northern hemisphere here all right so these are our polar air masses then you notice that every single air mass up north has a polar in it because it's cold and based on where it is it's either going to have m for maritime over the oceans or c for continental over land so that brings us down south. So if we were to cut this United States in half, drew a line right across here, then you'd see that the northern parts are up here, and then we have our southern air masses down here. And the color red should really tip you off as to what type of temperatures they have. So let's take a look at where these source regions are forming. So down here on the bottom left, we're out in the water. So as we know, that should be maritime. And then we're down south where it's warm. So if you remember correctly, our temperature or our phrase for warm temperatures is tropical. So we're going to want to find a maritime tropical air mass and that's what we have right here, MT. So we drag that down and that's our maritime tropical. Okay, as we move over to the right here, we'll notice that this little air mass forms straight over land and if you think about it, this is where Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Southern California, and also parts of Mexico are formed. So this type of air mass, and if you think about those areas, usually you think about dry desert, hot, dry desert land. And that's exactly the type of air mass that's there, which is what makes it desert type land. So it's hot, which is going to be tropical, and then it's over land, over the continent, which makes it continental. So we're going to grab our continental tropical air mass and drag it down and label it right there. And then lastly, if we move over here, we're over the Gulf within the Gulf of Mexico and over the Keys and other small countries and islands in this area. But again, we're down south and we're warm and we're over the water, which makes us humid. So we're going to be maritime for over the ocean and then tropical because we're warm. And then as a result, we'll drag down the maritime tropical label. Okay, and that's how you go about labeling your air masses. You just have to look at where they form. If they're in the north, they're polar. If they're on the water, 
they're maritime. And if they're over land, they're continental. If they're down south, they're tropical. And the same thing goes, maritime for over the ocean and continental over the land. Okay, so that concludes our air mass video. I hope you find this helpful.